everyone. Welcome to the Future DDS Dental School Experience Series, where we help you decide which dental school is right for you. Now, every school is unique and will provide you with a different experience, but we thought, who better to explain to you what a school has to offer than a student who actually goes there? Our goal in this series is to give you a first-hand perspective of every dental program in America and ultimately help you make the right decision. So today we'll be showcasing Rewin Zenaldine, who is a D2 at Creighton University School of Dentistry. So how are you doing, Rewin? Good, how are you? I am doing well, I am doing well. Uh, first and foremost, you know, we from Future DDS want to say thank you so much for taking the time out today to uh, do this interview with us. Yeah, it is my pleasure. Great, great. So um, if you can, please tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from, where you went to undergrad, and why you wanted to become a dentist. All right, so um, my backstory is uh, my parents, um, from the very beginning, they immigrated from Egypt to the United States. So I'm a first generation American. I was born in Brooklyn and I grew up in Queens. And um, I then moved to South Dakota for a bit and uh, ultimately ended up going to Oklahoma State University for undergrad. Um, and then from there, I kind of was just like, we'll see where the wind takes me. So I applied to several schools, not knowing anything about the process, not really having any friends who have gone through it or family who's even like in the United States to um, begin. So um, I uh, kind of applied through that. Um, both my parents uh, went to school in Egypt and they actually practiced medicine. So mm. I've been around medicine my whole life, but it wasn't until when I was... Um, um, in my like early teens, my aunt went to the dentist in Egypt and actually she contracted hep C and ended up passing away. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of my first like, oh, like you think of the dentist, you don't really take it seriously. You're like, mm -hmm. oh, it's just like my teeth, whatever. Um, and you don't think about how it can actually be a life or death situation. So that kind of was my first, you know, spark into um, like the field and just what made me kind of curious about it. And then I shadowed a bunch and I I loved it so here I am right right here you are no. wow okay that's a that was emotional huh? yeah, <laughs> no. it was a little heavy yeah, yeah I mean I mean great no that's a that's an amazing story and of course it's it's given you the fire and the passion to continue through dentistry so of course that's amazing um heavy though yeah we haven't heard anything that that touching in a while so thank you for sharing that honestly you know that's yeah. very, very personal so thank you uh -huh. um so now let's talk about your school Creighton. Um, what city is Creighton in? So Creighton is in Omaha, Nebraska. Okay. Right smack dab, almost like the middle of the United States. Okay. And like, what are some things about the city? Because I mean, I've personally never been to Nebraska. Like, how would you describe the city? Well, honestly, um, I'd never been to Nebraska until I went for my interview and I <laughs> literally flew in and left the same morning. And then I was like, I guess I'm going to Creighton. Cause right. I like, <laughs> um, Omaha is really interesting for it's kind of one of like the most diverse cities in every direction, like north, south, east, west for like the next, I want to say like 500 miles. So um, it's really nice because there is something for everyone. Mm -hmm. There is um, a lot of like, I'm obviously ethnic. There's a lot of ethnic people around. Um, if you are looking for that, you got it if you want it. Um, there's kind of a scene for everything and the downtown is really cute and quaint and there's just a lot to do. And something really cool and unique about Omaha is that they actually, if you're like a foodie, which everyone loves food, right. they have the most like restaurants per capita for the population or something than any city in the United States. So anything that you are craving, there is food for it here. Like there's so many restaurants. So that's kind of one thing I like to do on the weekends is like, I like to try a new place that I haven't been. Mm -hmm. So there's like a million pizzerias. So, you know, I have like a list of my favorites or like a million like Indian restaurants, sushi, all that. There's like so many different things. There's like chain, there's a bunch of local. So I really um, like that in downtown in Omaha. It's like, I don't know, maybe like 15 block radius. And it is all like local owned restaurants and mm -hmm. little shops. So it's got a really nice like small town feel, right. but it is a very big city including the suburbs and stuff so wow okay so quick question what's your favorite type food <laughs> oh you know i have to say mediterranean okay My favorite on the coast i'm i'm all about that mediterranean food okay 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 so okay let's bring it back to uh school uh, for a second because now my mind is elsewhere i'm thinking about food now but um 
How big is your class size? So um, Creighton recently literally just opened a new school in August. So we have a brand spanking new dental school. Um, the class size for incoming students now is 120, I believe. Okay. Or, um, and I think they didn't fill the whole class or something. I'm not quite sure. Do not quote me on any of that. Yeah. Um, but they do have a much larger class size than us. I think it's 115 or something currently, and they didn't fill it all. So next year, the class should be like 120 about. And my class is 85. Okay. Okay. And does Creighton have like a medical school? They do. Okay. Do y'all take classes together or is it just completely separate? No. So when they open the new dental school, it's completely private, like its own building mm. separate from every other professional school. Because they also have like PT and OT and we used to share a building with um, uh, PT and OT, I think for sure last year. But now we have our own building um, completely separate from every other building on campus. Okay. Okay, great. And so um, I know that you, you briefly talked about your interview and you said, you know, you got in, so you're like, I guess I'm going to Creighton. Can you kind of tell us like what are some of the key things that even attracted you to the school in the first place? So really kind of what I looked for in all my interviews is, you know, I'm, I'm all about the giving back. My like culture is really community based. So we like work for the community. We are community servants. That is what we're doing. So I, my kind of, uh, the key things that I looked for in my interviews were when I walked in and I saw a lot of people in the clinic getting a lot of help. That was my favorite thing to see is like, wow, they're really doing it and students doing it with the help of professors. I also looked for um, the ratio of students to professors because I obviously the more one-on-one, -on -one, I felt like I would benefit from that. And, you know, some other schools I interviewed at would be like, oh, one professor at every 25 students. Or something like that for really big classes and stuff and so I really liked the student to professor ratio at Creighton mm -hmm. and I really liked um, how much care they're providing the community because it was a Jesuit school they did place it in a um, not so great part of town <laughs> we don't have any issues generally but right. there is a lot of homeless people around um, I feel like any city any city that's gonna yeah, have you know, it's and it's like you never have problems with it there's never issues but um, because it's in a like need-based part of town we do get a lot of patients who really really need the help and so when i walked in for my interview and i saw that the waiting room was packed i was like they are doing what we are supposed to do here yeah. and that's what i wanted to see so that was my um main thing when i walked into creighton i saw how many people were there and i just really i kind of felt it and i kind of liked the the city vibe and right. the vibe of the school i like the energy that's that's no, pretty that's huge. That's huge. <laughs> if that that's makes sense. Real thing. but yeah so i that was my main determinant was how many people were they were helping and then the student to dr ratio okay and you you keep talking about the interview and so i want to ask you uh can you actually explain the interview process you know did you all you know start in one room by yourself with one faculty or did you all like you know come together at first in a big group and then go through the process like how exactly did that go down so my interview process was actually very interesting. And it, my understanding is that they've since like then changed it a little bit. Okay. But, um, so my interview, I, I, like I was saying earlier, I flew in for my interview. I'd never been to Omaha. I flew in that morning and then at like 8 a.m. My interview was at noon and I was gone by 4 p.m. My interview literally and everything took two hours. So I go into the waiting room and the Dean of Admissions is a guy named Dr. Norton wonderful man um he's really nice easy to talk to um but he at the time was only doing one-on-one -on -one interviews mm -hmm. and so you come into this room you wait and then dr Horton's like calls you back in you chit chat a little bit and he um with me he kind of uh pressed me a little bit so it was definitely my most stressful interview exactly. and then afterwards you know he's like polite it's very conversational and then we move forward with the tour and then they give you a tour for like 30 minutes and a student does it and they're just like yeah this is a school this is what we do pretty much you have any questions all right see ya so it could be anywhere from like an hour to two hours or like however long or how many questions you have so um it was a very interesting uh interview experience because most of my other interviews were either like there was different sections of it or there was multiple interviewers and things like that but um i kind of like that Dr. Norton is very straight to the point with his questions. He was kind of like, 
you know, like I looked at your resume. I, you know, I know who you are. Like, do you have questions for me? And so I, I kind of like that. There wasn't too many, um, I, uh, like, I want, I don't want to say, um, difficult questions because I think that's relative, but, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it was, I, I, I thought it was a very straightforward, like easy kind of day. Cause when you are in those long days of interviews, I personally found those crazy draining. Cause you're just like the whole time right. trying to be, you know, happy and upbeat and right, right, right. like, Oh, this is so stressful. But yeah. So. It's always, it's always interesting because like, I feel like a lot of people who are gearing up for these interviews, they're always like super, super nervous. And it's easy for us to say now that we're on the other side of it, you know, like everything will be okay. Like don't stress it, but people are always going to stress it, you know, <laughs> like people are always going to be super, super nervous. But I mean, it seems like your interview, at least at Creighton was, was fairly straightforward. It was right. straightforward. It was definitely a little stressful, but it was straightforward. And before we go on to the next question, I do want to address something because I remember when I was in the process of interviewing, mm -hmm. I had heard this about Creighton and I was kind of like, what? No, like whatever. Can you get into Creighton without an interview? The answer is yes. They do accept students based on completely application only. Wow. Now the aside to that is um, Dr. Noren is a very understanding, very realistic person. And I do know that for, um, certain people like in the undergrad sometimes their application is different so some of them do not get interviews but that's just because their application process is different if you're coming mm. from the undergrad and i don't know if it's like a three-year program or something i didn't go to crane undergrad and then i also know that um some people in the past who had like um like reasonable excuses to why it would be very difficult for them to travel mm -hmm. or difficult for them to um make it to an interview or schedule an interview they um had been accepted without um interviews now i have no clue about their scores or their like outstanding resumes yeah, right. or anything like that i cannot speak on to like what the qualifications were but i do know that um if you had like a circumstance and you couldn't make it there was still a possibility you could get an interview i or uh, accepted i just was not willing to risk that right, <laughs> you right. Could, like fly and travel and whatever um but yeah so that that is something that is kind of interesting about Creighton. And I don't think many schools do that. Okay. I don't know if it's still the case, but when I got accepted, I know people who were accepted in my class without an interview. Okay, so, so far, I think Creighton is the only school that I've personally heard of that does that, you know? So that's definitely unique. But yeah. I, would, I do wanna like run back and ask you a quick question. You went straight to dental school, straight out of undergrad, correct? Yes. Okay, okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure because some people, you know, of course had an off year or did a master's program, whatever it may be. Um, so I forgot to ask you that earlier in the interview. But, um, but okay, so you went to your interview. Obviously, you got in, you're here, everything's, you know, great. Yeah. Um, can you kind of talk about that, that first week of school? Did you all have like an orientation week? Or was it more of just like, hey, welcome to dental school? let's start anatomy, you know? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, the first week, terrifying. Okay. You're like, wow. I, me personally didn't know anybody. Um, mm -hmm. ever, don't even know the city. Don't even know how to get here without a GPS, you know, all that. Um, so, uh, it's kind of stressful uh, at first, but they really, um, bore you to death in orientation for like, I think the first whole day we were going through orientation. They're telling us about all the programs our school has to offer about, you know, all the resources we have, you know, from like mental health services to like physical health services, mm. to, you know, um, where the gym's at, the school tour, school, like little history, all the staff who you'll be working with, um, clinic protocols, kind of things like that. Um, uh, and of course, 90% of it, you forget immediately. <laughs> and then, you know, your academic policy, your attendance, yeah, policy, yeah. <laughs> and every guest speaker that comes in. So they have like a nice like day and a half or two day little excursion about like, all this and all these people coming in and then um yeah they go through like mindfulness and all that stuff and they kind of did it again this year um at the beginning of this year also but it was only like a half day for us sophomores mm -hmm. and then like a whole two or three day process for the freshmen my roommate's a d1 so okay but um <laughs> yeah um so uh um they do that and then you basically just hop into like i think i remember first thing we had is anatomy lecture Mm -hmm. so um yeah you get straight to it and um Creighton is uh 
they changed it now. So it's um, a lot better. Uh, we have like windows and stuff in our new building and it's a lot more friendly. Um, but we uh, pretty much something, I don't know how every school is, the way they still have the same lecture style where you have an assigned seat mm -hmm. and you sit there for every class and the professor rotates out. And generally first year, there's no uh, like technology allowed. You can't be on your phone and you should not like tablets were accepted because like you could write on it but for the most part you never had somebody like up with a laptop in class typing notes that was just not really a thing so that was one thing that i um had in my tour um where i thought it was interesting the um the d3 who inter who turned me at the time was like yeah also can't believe people get in without knowing this you can't use electronics in class and so i was like shook you know but you know last name zinaldine all the way in the back no i'm just kidding i <laughs> But, um, uh, you know, it was, it was like shocking to me um, compared to all the freedom you have in undergrad. So it kind of um, is different. And we do have some uh, older uh, professors, older doctors. So they're a bit more strict. A lot of people like in the military. So I think our school has a lot of like respect. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have those older um, professors and, you know, you, you just kind of know who's more, you can tell Lenient. who's more serious. Right. Kind of like you know I'm, I'm not saying like you can get away with like being on your phone or something more but because they will they will call you out <laughs> they'll call you out for being late they'll call you out um for um being on your phone uh but it's it gets less serious as you get into more difficult coursework okay and it's funny because like when you first said that i was like wow that sounds crazy but now now that i'm thinking about it that actually makes a lot of sense you know because even now like sometimes i'll be in class text message oop, you know now my mind is completely focused on my cell phone instead of the lecture. So that happens all the time. So if I was able to eliminate that distraction, I think that um, I would be a lot more efficient while I'm in class, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's, it's stressful at first. I remember first week I was like, okay, we start classes. We only had like one or two day of classes, um, uh, full days of class at this point. And I remember uh, my two biggest struggles were, we have no cafeteria in our school. So okay. everything's vending machine, unless you pack lunch. I forgot lunch and it was the worst thing. And then also staying awake because it is <laughs> used to undergrad, like dilly dallying, like between like the hours of eight and noon. And then you're like, I guess I'll go to class for four hours and then you're done for the day. Maybe nothing tomorrow, whatever. So staying awake from eight to five from like lecture after lecture, I, I was really struggling, especially like having this big hair. Like it was so obvious when I started to fall asleep and wake up. <laughs> it was um, a struggle for me at first. Um, but I found like, you know, definitely eating like a light lunch helped keep me awake and all that stuff that you coffee. I had never drank it before. Who was she? Right. <laughs> yeah, I am drinking coffee. A less caffeinated version of yourself, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, no, that's interesting. Like the fact that you just brought that up, that's interesting that you're the only one who's brought that up yet. Like literally your schedule changes so much from undergrad to dental school. And I, I can't wondering. believe nobody's brought that up. Nobody's that was my first thing. I was like, how am I going to stay awake for the rest of my career? Cause I, I mean, and I'm generally a morning person. So it's like, you know, that 2 PM nap time. Oh, oh it's God, crucial. Those classes. And then they're talking about dental materials. You're like, I don't even know what Eugenol is. And you're like, Oh my God. <laughs> hold on, hold on. So really, really quickly. Cause I actually need to know this because like I've started trying to adapt this whole like 5am club. So I'm waking up at 5am. And like you said, around like 12, one and two, I literally just hit a wall. And right. like, I just really, my body is begging me to like take a nap or do something. So how have you learned to overcome that? You just had a bunch of coffee and like a light lunch? Or? No, actually, I don't really, I don't, I don't mess with coffee like that. Um, okay. I don't, I literally hate the taste of coffee. So I never drank it till I had to. Mm -hmm. Um, so my big thing is I noticed if I'm eating like a heavy lunch, that always put me to sleep. So I'm not having like pasta or a sandwich. I'm having like a salad, something light with some protein in it. And then um, if I really wanted something like um, with more sugar in it, something more carby, my, my bachelor's degree is in nutrition though. So mm -hmm. I'm also a bit more versed in the, like these things, but um, you know, then I would have um, like an apple or some fruit with like some simple sugars in it to just kind of like give me a little like energy spike uh, to go into the next class, but I would never eat like a heavy meal that would put me to sleep because you know you get the itis and then you're passing out Always. so um, <laughs> yeah I really I really tried to not do that I learned my lesson freshman year um from packing like a heavy lunch so we pack a light lunch and then also um 
I really <laughs> was trying to do that whole like I can only sleep four hours and be okay. Totally not. So like if I, um, I usually have to sleep five hours, which I know is not that much for some people, but if I get at least five hours of sleep, then I'll be decent throughout the day. So just scheduling it out to where I sleep and I, you know, I'm scheduled like that, but. Okay. I need to take note of that. Yeah. Cause like I try to wake up at five and like, I'll go to sleep at like 1230 and then my entire day, We'll just be groggy, you know, and it's just, it's always. You go to bed at 5 p.m. and wake up at 12.30? No, no, no. I go to sleep at 12.30 and wake up at 5 a.m., yeah. Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah. I know, my brain, like, switch that. No, no, like, you're cool. Oh, well. No, you're good. You're good. Um, so I actually want to um, revisit something that you said earlier. You spoke about um, your school kind of bringing up mindfulness, you know, or you said something about. Yes, I did. Mindfulness, okay. Um, mindfulness in the sense of what just making sure that you're being respectful to people or like so mindfulness actually they have like they have yoga on fridays during lunch oh okay yeah, okay like, being aware of your body and being um. able to it and staying healthy kind of thing because i think we get in this mindset where see i like i'm very type b in the sense that like i have a job i work uh, I'd like to make some money on the side. I waitress like yeah. um, on the weekends and stuff. Like I still have a life, you know, I mean, pretty much it's almost only exclusively dental school. And then like my one shift on the weekends, but you know, I didn't want dental school to be the only thing that I am because p you have a career and then you retire and right. you still have a life. You still have family friends, you know? So I think being realistic was um, a big thing for me and finding that outlet where I can be like, okay, like I, my job, I work with my friends. Um, and they're all in dental school. So. so it's like, we have that like connect. Um, we have like similar interests, similar community things that we all like to do together. And so, um, they really push into like being aware of kind of what you're going through and what you're feeling because dental school is really stressful. Yeah. Um, you can say that it's not, or you can act like you're cool, but on the inside, I think everybody's had at least one panic attack. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah their freshman year I know I definitely have it gets to the point where you're like oh my gosh there's so much and I think just um they really try to help push you you know take it day by day and then there's also these exercises um they recently just started this new um implemented this new program where they actually brought a new um staff member um and she helps you like with the, it's kind of like yoga but super easy like when I say yoga I'm talking about like the like savasana laying on the floor like yeah. and then i sometimes fall asleep like <laughs> it's very chill you don't have to be like any extreme sort of yoga you don't even have to go if you don't want to right. but fridays they have uh yoga so they um do that and um then there's like these like tapping and like i don't know these other exercises um that they showed us an orientation that would right. help us you know calm if we have to find ourselves feeling any type of way so and that's amazing that they, at least they offer that you know because like yeah mental health is huge and I think that I've never really been one to to be aware of mental health until I you know came into dental school and I really was like you said having these these micro panic attacks you know and and I feel like I'm a lucky one because some of my friends are extremely extremely stressed and and I see why you know dental school is is difficult you know and I think it's all about mentality um and if if there's any way that you the viewers can you know make sure that your mental health is always always in a positive state you know make sure that you do that whether it be going out to with your friends um getting a, i mean getting a job is a lot i don't know how you do it kudos off to you your time management skills must be yeah. amazing. it's like you know the more you got on your plate the more organized you got to be you That's can't okay. around as much i can't be out here like fooling around I need to focus so it was kind of one of those things where i was like all right saturday nights i'm not going out i'm not hanging out i'm working and that means like friday night i gotta get this done or else saturday or sunday is gonna be like a mess right. so it's kind of a lot of just me um knowing that like an undergrad i filled out my whole schedule mm -hmm. because it would just keep me on my game that makes sense that makes sense definitely a way to go about it um so yeah everybody the viewers if you want to try it and it actually might work because you're right once you are more busy or once your schedule is filled, you do have to be more organized. So. Well, also, like, uh, 
our professors years ago, they're like, oh, I had three jobs in dental school, whatever. I'm not saying that it was right or it was easy, but I'm, but I'm also like, they had the same like amount of things they had to learn. And in fact, even more difficult because they couldn't just Google things. They didn't have lecture capture. They didn't have Google. No, yeah, they didn't have recorded anything. They had nothing, no internet, no computers. So can you like imagine going from that and having to read everything and like own the actual book and do everything and having jobs on top of that? And they all did it. So like, I kind of was like, you know, we make it seem like we really um, blow up the um, blow up like the scale of what this really is, right. you know. And it's very important, and you know, we have to. I really do believe like giving it all now because this is going to determine, you know, how good you will be in your future practice. But we also keep in mind that, like, with all these medical professions you have to keep continuing education because there's new stuff every year, yeah. new products. You'll never be the best if you don't keep up with it. So yeah. it kind of is like you do what you can now, but you have to keep building off of that forever until you stop. Exactly. So that's kind of why I was like, you know, I like for me, I can have this outlet and I can do this. I can do that because I'm still going to have to keep going no matter what. Right. You know? And it, you're going to learn. learn. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were you about to say? No, I was just going to say at the end of it, you're going to learn it like one way or another. You're going to be doing it. You're going to have to know it. You're going to have to learn. It. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that like, just to kind of like build off of what you're saying, you know, my mind's like going now. <laughs> it's, um, you're right in the fact that, you know, I always tell people like, this is the first time we've ever learned this. Like I've never held a drill before dental school, you know, and I think that it's easy for people to get into this, um, insecure state where they might see other people doing better than them or whatever it may be you know but I'm just kind of like I try to tell myself this as well like I've never done this before and I'm going to get better I'm going to learn how to do this granted somebody might learn how to do a crown pep prep faster than me but as long as I you know take my course right. I'm going to, get to the point where I'm going to be efficient at it so no that's also huge for all you viewers who are starting zone school um soon hopefully within the next year or two. Um, definitely keep that in mind. Just run your own race. Do not compare yourself to anybody. Um, okay, so I want to ask you another question. Yeah, we got to keep moving on. Um, can you kind of give us a, a uh, day in the life at Creighton as far as like being a D1? I know at first you said that when you got your first couple of classes, you might have had like one or two. But let's say once you got more into your, your scheduled courses, you know, like mm -hmm. at the peak of, your D1 semester, what was that kind of like starting from like 8 a.m. until five, like you said, can you kind of walk us through that? Yeah, for sure. So Creighton, I think, I am I mean, I know I have like a friend at Boston um, and some other places and some schools are varying um, where like some you don't have to attend class, some mm -hmm. you do. Creighton is unique in the fact that you have to be in class eight to five every single day. Mm. Um, sometimes you might get like a break in your schedule or you're like oh I'm off at like three or I'm off at two or after I don't have anything after lunch and that like happens seldom but most weeks expect to be there eight to five and they have a pretty strict attendance policy especially your freshman year they mm -hmm. kind of really push that um, I mean we're adults nothing really major is going to happen if you like skip class all the time but you don't want to get on the bad side of any of the professors. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there's a lot of respect in our school. And um, so you don't, it's just like a bad idea to kind of go down that path. Right. So, um, and honestly, like what is better than not having to listen to like seven hours of lecture to catch up on everything you skipped. That's almost priceless to me. So yeah. eight to five every day, um, <laughs> I, you know, generally you have um, in the morning, it would be, maybe two, three hours of lecture. And this is last um, year. So I would have like two th or three hours of lecture in the morning. And then I would have like an hour um, or two hours, depending on how many lectures of lab. So it'd either be like histology or anatomy labs. So that's like the big thing they push. Um, we don't take boards till the summer. So D2 um, summer going to G D3. Oh. So um, D1 year, you only cover like general histo and anatomy and then head and neck anatomy and um, like dental histology, and then you go into dental anatomy, of course, and dental materials. So pathology, I think, is the only class from the boards that we don't really cover the first year. And that's because they teach us like pathology and oral pathology all like from the summer of last summer, all the way until this summer. I'm learning like pathology, and then I take my boards. Okay. I don't know why they do it that way, but that's how they do it. So um, freshman year is really just anatomy and histology. 
hardcore and then dental anatomy dental materials okay so, go ahead keep going well that's i mean so we have like mondays all day dental anatomy and you have a break and we carve teeth out of wax that's our big thing for dental anatomy with all the measurements after the lecture we'll carve the teeth and then it would be pretty much between tuesday wednesday thursday it was all histology and anatomy in their labs and then we have um, dental materials one afternoon like biochem one morning physiology like those other courses that we take freshman year but the big like um the big like the sections um of the boards that we take kind of spread out like that okay so are you do you have the option to take that that weird boards where it's like the merging of the two or you still have to take part one and part two I don't believe that we can take the um, uh, merge boards. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure um, everyone that I know has taken part one and part two. I know that there's been a lot of debate of like, it's all gonna be different when you do it or whatever. And people have been arguing about the boards for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we still have the same, um, okay. the same part one and part two. Okay, okay, great, great. Um, okay, so say somebody has watched this interview and they're like, you know what? Rewin has told me everything I want to hear. I want to go to Creighton. Like, that's the school for me. What's something that uh, you would tell them to make sure is extremely strong on their dental school application? Like, what does Creighton really look for in an applicant? So something that I really like about Creighton, um, this personally did not affect me because mm -hmm. my dad was pretty much like the same scores all around. Like, I was like 19, 20, 19, 20, whatever. And then I got like, um, uh, 20 on the PAT part two. So I was very like borderline. I got a 20 on the dat. I have no shame in admitting that I'm proud. <laughs> I no. got it done and I applied. I took it once and I was like, thank the Lord. It's <laughs> um, so I, uh, I, uh, they did that, but I know from a lot of students, they, some of them took it and they like maybe got a 19 or a 20 and they're like, yeah. And that was only because I got like a 25 in OCHEM, but I got a 16 in Gen Chem they really look at the section breakdown. They don't just take this raw score for what it is. So if you didn't do too hot because of something, they um, do look at that. Um, and they are like willing to work with you on that. They do like a strong GPA though, but it's realistic. So when you, I, I'm sure when um, people are applying, you look at the, um, the scales, um, uh, like that ranking of dental schools, mm -hmm. the ranking, and then they have the average GPA, average DA team. So most schools, it's like, you see like 3.6, 3.5. And you know, you have those reps that come to you in undergrad who are like, the last class had an average of 3.9, average DAT of 27. And you're like, oh my God, I'm never gonna make it. Um, they're pretty realistic to that. So like, if your GPA is like a 3.45 like above, you're, you're pretty in, like in safe waters if you do like pretty solid in your DAT. So it's not, um, I mean, it depends. For me, I didn't find it unachievable to achieve like above a 3.5 in undergrad, but it, also, but it also depends on what your major was and like, you know, how you handle like transitioning because it is hard. Mm -hmm. And then um, they do also look a lot at your extracurricular activities, especially, um, well, I know uh, Dr. Norton personally, he likes sports a lot. So if you did a lot of sports, that's kind of like brownie points with him. I don't know if it actually helps you, but he's a, he's a big sports guy. Okay. So I know some people, they kind of like um, got to like uh, joke around about sports in their interview. And I'm like, wow, if I knew anything about any sports ball, I would have maybe had a like easier interview because mine was very like academic and serious. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, they seem to have like better experiences um, with their interview if you could talk sports with him. So um, definitely a nice one up. Um, but yeah, it's um, pretty much, I think most dental schools are the same. They want that good GPA, that good um, DAT score, but they do definitely holistically look at your application. And so, so I love the fact that you just told us what your DAT score was. You know, I'm act actually currently at the IDEA conference in Chicago, and I was just at the Go Dental Recruitment Fair yesterday, and students were running up to me, and they're, you know, they're stressed. And I'm like, what's, what's wrong? What's wrong? And they're like, I've heard that I can't get into dental school unless I have a 23 on my DAT. And I'm like, Ooh, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. Like, I mean, granted, there might be select, select few schools that have that, uh, such a rigorous, I guess, uh, DAT score requirement, but nobody is, I mean, 
I don't know. I just I've Honestly, met a lot of I people who have made nineteens, twenties, and still gotten yeah. into dental school. Well, nineteen twenty is the average acceptance. You know, it's the seventeen is the national average. You should not be sweating it if you did better than that. Honestly. Right. Plenty of people got 18s, plenty of people got 17s, um, like, you know, and they're in dental school with right. me. I'm not out here, like, it really means nothing. It doesn't mean you're going to perform better. It doesn't have really anything to do with your actual perceptual ability right. when it comes to what you're doing. I still suck at indirect vision. I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> it's not like um, it will make you, like, a lot better at school, but... Right. There are, and even for us, so we have like master's programs and um, post back programs tied with the dental school. Mm -hmm. Some of those students even got, I know one of them, he got like a 25 or a 26. So, and they, and they didn't get in first round. So that's not the only determinant factor. Like, you know, it is a big deal. Um, but that's kind of why I don't really care about sharing my score or how I did, because for me, I was like, that was so hard. I've never had like such a, like, exam experience in my life you know not the SAT ACT like I think we all kind of like whatever you know oh, right. I was literally like what 16 at the time I'm taking that thing I'm not taking anything serious right. so by the time you're taking this test it's like wow this is like you have put so much pressure on yourself to, like my whole career everything depends on it but um it's not like game over if you don't get that perfect score you want and definitely I got into actually three or four other schools I got to um, UNMC, Midwestern, and, and um, NYU, but I interviewed at also um, OU. I did not get and tell you, but um, all that with my score of a 20. So, you know, and you, and also like does not help that people in the interview process are like, I remember like having interviews and like, like girls and guys would be chatting it up. They'd be like, oh, I got a 26. I'm so nervous. Oh, what am I going to do? And I'm just like, okay, I'm very like calm, <laughs> you know, like I, you can only, you're your own worst enemy. That's my biggest thing. So it doesn't matter like what you hear, what you see, or what you read, you just got to do your best. And that's, what's going to get you everywhere you're going to go. See, that, that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm wondering if me and you were in the same uh, interview because uh, <laughs> literally people were saying the same exact thing. They were like, oh my gosh, my DAT score, I only got a 25 on Argo. And like, now I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm like, I'm looking at them like, wow, like, what is up with you? But humble I think brag, that, humble brag. <laughs> I'm like, exactly. There's, <laughs> there's no need. There's no need. Like, we're obviously all here in this interview group together. Like, I don't need to know your DAT score. But I also think that a lot of people are getting misleading information from whatever sources it may be, you know, whether it be a, I'm, <laughs> I don't know. I know. I never went on it, but my brother, he's um, doing med school. Mm -hmm. And I remember when he was applying and all that process, all the things he would read, he was like, oh, like, oh my God, you know, he made it. And I know he didn't have like all his like stuff all put together. Like he right. just, you know, it's, it's just variable. There's so many things that go into it. You so can't say things. that. And there will literally, for the audience listening, there will be trolls everywhere within your life, you know? So literally you have to learn how to be self-reliant um, and really just don't, don't listen to the naysayers, you know? If you really want to do something, you can always do it. And I promise you, because there have been people who have been in a lot worse situation than the majority of some people. I, I mean, you can't say, of course, definitely, but... I know some people who have been in some really sticky situations, um, you know, with their family, whatever, maybe even with grades or whatever, and they still managed to get into dental school and excel. So don't ever let somebody tell you that you cannot do it. Um, and don't ever let somebody else's insecurities affect you and your drive and your passion to go to dental school. Um, right. So bringing it back. Um, well, for <laughs> well, real quick, that reminds me, my PSA, my okay. PSA for dental school, um, I don't know where like people watching this will be coming from. I went, came from Oklahoma State. Mm -hmm. That was where I like my process of applying and all that. Very uncompetitive in environment. Dental school is super competitive, especially at a school like mine. And I'm sure actually, I can't even say that because I don't know about other schools. We don't have a residency program. So like we're not competing with each other for residency spots at the school, mm -hmm. but there definitely is a much more competitive environment than I have ever been used to. So mm -hmm. like, the competition and that kind of like cutthroat whatever um i was not used to and it kind of took me aback at first so i was kind of like wow these people are harsh like mm -hmm. some people um you know you have like 
people they say are like trying to sabotage one another or whatever all these like rumors around the rumor mill because you know our class sizes are so small mm-hmm. everyone hears everyone talks just like everywhere else so um that was kind of one thing where i was not ready for so you do kind of have to be prepared for a more competitive environment especially if you're not a competitive person because i am not a competitive mm-hmm. person. but um uh yeah that's definitely one thing that if you are going to dental school and you're thinking it's going to be super chill at times it can be but at times it really is not (laughs) yeah dental school and chill really don't don't even sound right together (laughs) it's it's not chill but i mean hey i think that the weekends or once you're done with those exam blocks i think when everybody's a lot less stressed um things are a lot better you know i think it can get kind of tense uh, during those test test periods, but um, but anyway, you uh, you mentioned that you are still working on your indirect vision. Um, I kind of want to ask you just about how your school approaches the whole clinic situation. Like, are you all exposed on uh, your third year, like a lot of other schools, or do you kind of start in the clinic a little bit earlier? So they really do a nice job of easing us into it. Mm-hmm. So I actually already have a patient, and okay. I am doing a full. Uh, denture on them so yeah. this year they have a new thing where like we're in groups of three and so me and my two classmates we have a patient he needs a full like brand new denture so um doing like that prosthodontic case with all the prosthodontists you know we are doing the primary impressions the final impressions the cast the wax room all that stuff we're doing all that for the patient ourselves and of course just like in the clinic professors are checking it off seeing what's wrong seeing what's right and then we take it and we go from there. And so we're going through the same steps and the same appointment like span as the juniors and seniors who see those patients. Um, they have something called like our class one experience. I'm gonna be seeing my first patient next week drilling in an actual human mouth. So they um, really kind of ease us into it. And I mean, it's not graded, but relatively, of course it's graded. It's a human being, so you have right. to do it right. Um, but they, um, something that they really, um, that I really like they did this year is that in our new building, every lab operatory has a mannequin in it. So we can instantly switch and we have like the real dental light, the little magnetic um, type it on. So we can just um, slap in our uh, mannequin, whether it's like our pedo type it on or a fixed type it on or whatever class type it on we're working on. We can just snap it in there and we can um, do actual work in the mannequin head and practice our own indirect vision. And uh, I, uh, I mean, it's still really hard, don't get me wrong, um, but it does make it a lot easier and especially with loops. And, and one thing that I'm gonna say, like, I don't know how other schools do it. I would say get loops right off the bat. So you learn how to use them and your posture is good from the go because we didn't, um, they weren't like really pushing them on us to get them until our sophomore year. And I was kind of thinking how much better I'd be at using them and um, kind of like, you know, figuring out my indirect vision had I really got into like my loops before this year. And I know some schools provide loops for their students. Ours doesn't. So we have like a loops fair. You can choose your vendor and all that stuff. So. Great. Great. All right. Yeah. We actually get our loops first year. Yeah. So yeah. So you have to pay, y'all get some type of discount though, right? For your loops. Um, like student, I think, yeah. Like student rate. Yeah. I mean, for anyone who's a dental student who might be watching this, I, I don't know if it would make sense otherwise. I have three and a half uh, magnification Q optics, mm-hmm. and I paid like twelve hundred, thirteen hundred okay. for it. So I mean, it's not cheap, but their customers Definitely are necessary. Free, so that's kind of what I liked. Yeah. I got non um, prismatic. So okay, yeah. okay, everybody, if your school does not provide you with mm-hmm. loops, get some loops. <laughs> like your back will thank you later in like 30 years like we promise you um also, look. the reason i did get 3.5 magnification if their school doesn't provide it is because that's what they say is like best to do endo with so if you want to use your loops for everything you're going to learn about they said at least 3.5 so you can like see canal really well so that's why i went with that okay All right. great great so i want you to tell the audience about like a unique um situation um, oh, whoa, hold on for one second. My battery's about to die. <laughs> oh, for one second. Okay, so a unique experience that kind of made you 
really reflect and think to yourself, wow, this is why I came here. This is what makes me so happy that I am at Creighton School of Dentistry. Um, well, I think it's just, so Creighton does these clinics called um, One World on Thursday nights. Every other Thursday night, it's like a kind of like a student volunteer clinic where we see uh, basically like acute care only. Um, and we, there's obviously a limit to what we can do, but it's, um, you know, students uh, come in to volunteer patients come in they're like oh my god this tooth is killing me or like you know whatever and then we do like you know some pulp vitality testing we um, kind of get on the problem and then do the best we can for that patient right now all for like 20 bucks I think it's like 20 or 25 bucks so um yeah like we'll do like cleanings they'll do um like very simple extractions like mm. certain things that they'll do for patients like right on the spot to kind of help alleviate them and um uh, the D1s and D2s can come go down and assist. And I love that because you get clinic experience outside of school and you get to assist in different things that you might not get to assist with during the school year. Cause we have like Fridays, usually afternoons is assisting um, for us D2 year, or we're doing cleanings ourselves or we're in like looking at radiographs. That's kind of like the three things that you could be really doing on a Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, and they ease you into that like uh, freshman year too, you assist. And um, one world's open like all four years you can go down and volunteer so volunteering one day um they had uh this like really big guy come in and he was having like really bad pain and um you would not think like this big like six like four dude would be so scared of going to the dentist yeah. but you know, he was pretty shook about getting this tooth pulled and so being able to like help him and he was so grateful and it's kind of like yeah you know it reminds you like this is what i'm doing this right. is why I'm doing it. you know you get through these zones you're like oh my god i don't think i've seen the light of day in the three right. weeks you know i've just been in this building sun up to sun down and test after test but um they you do get to see the patients like gratitude and stuff like that um through everything we do and i just i really like that so that was definitely the one moment where i was like yeah that's why I'm here. That was pretty cool. Right, right, right. That, that patient interaction is, is one of the best experiences. And I'm still waiting for it. We have done uh, nothing like that with patients yet, but it's coming. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, so now we're near the end of the interview. Right. I want you to give the audience like one piece of advice and not even if they want to go to Creighton say they just are applying to dental school right now, like what's that one piece of advice you would love just to give to everybody with regards to applying to dental school? So something I think is really important, especially with people I've noticed that um, go into medicine, they kind of uh, have this like little pride to themselves or kind of like, I don't want to say an ego, but a lot of them do, yeah. which is fine. Um, uh, you know, ego is good to an extent, but kind of when it comes to the whole application process, to keep yourself from going actually insane, swallow your pride, be mm -hmm. shameless. I knew people, so when I, um, talking to some of my classmates, I interviewed at NYU and I actually was waitlisted um, uh, prior to like everything. And one of my friends in class now, he had an interview at NYU and um, Columbia, cause he actually killed his dad. But he was telling me that he didn't originally have an NYU interview and he was flying in for his Columbia interview. So he just called NYU School of Dentistry. He was like, listen, I'm coming to New York once. Like, are you guys gonna interview me or not? And they were like, all right, we'll fit you in. And I was like, what? Like, had I been so bold, like maybe I would have gotten my interview sooner or maybe had I, like, I would have figured out what I was, where I was at. And uh, I, uh, I realized that like, you know, don't have any shame. I really wanted to um, make my like chances known as possible call those admissions people until they're like, oh, hey, hey, Rowan, like, good to hear from you again. Yeah, your application's still the same status it was two hours ago. But, you know, thanks for calling. Yeah, right. <laughs> they love to see the interest. I'm not saying I was that overbearing at all. But, you know, um, it is good for them to be able to recognize you to see that you are so interested. And so yeah. if you can get your foot in every door possible, and especially with um, people like me, I didn't have a dental school with my um, uh, that was attached to my undergrad so like i didn't have like there's no osu school of dentistry i had to go somewhere else so there's very few dental schools um in the us there's only like 64 i think so if you 
don't have a, um, if you don't have one at the university you're currently at and you have to travel for it, utilize technology because I didn't have those resources where I could just like pop in the dental school and be like, oh, hey, like doc, it's me. I really want to come here. Remember me, whatever. So if you can't at least put your face um, to your name, like put your voice to your name mm -hmm. or your like e email to your name, you yeah. know, really, really try and like do everything to get out there. And I know a lot of people kind of like when you apply for a job and you're like, oh, well, they never called me back. I'm like, well, call oh, them. Yeah. <laughs> you know put some work in here and i think um, a lot of people don't do that because they don't want to like come off any type of way but at that point come off as as shameless as possible like you know i like beg like a dog because the moment you're in it's done and you're in and you move on and then you have four more years of joy to go through until you're at the like end game so i really just think it's important for you to really just go for it head on and not be afraid to hold back or, you know, anything like that. And that's kind of how I approached the whole application process. I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this once and I'm going to do it right. Cause I'm going to utilize every option I have. I was trying to like find everybody that I knew from the pre dent club who's doing this, who's doing that. I called people. I didn't even know. That's how I met my roommate. Um, I didn't hardly even know her, but I knew she applied. So I was like, can you tell me what the test felt like even yeah. like I knew what I'm getting myself into? Um, so yeah, just utilize every source you can because you never know like what's going to be that one thing that's going to make or break it for you. And I remember with NYU, I was waitlisted and I was like, dude, this really sucks. <laughs> and um, uh, I called. So something about me is that I recognize voices pretty well. And one of the women who gave us a section of the tour, she was not like someone I interviewed or someone we hardly talked to. Um, she, she, uh, uh, answer the phone. And I was like, is this Jessica? And she was like, how do you know my name? I was like, I just recognized your voice. Um, and she was like, oh, that's wild. She was like, yeah, like you're still on the wait list. Like, you know, like keep calling. We'll let you know. Like they don't tell you an official rank number. At NYU. Right. And I never even like, I, by then it was like July or something. And I was like, I'm not going to like, you know, keep hope that, you know, I'm going to go here. Right. And also class um, sizes are huge. So that's like something that I didn't, I didn't love. But um, yeah, so I just kind of like let that opportunity slip and just went ahead and like signed the deal off at Creighton because that was definitely, I like, I like the school and I'm here. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, you know, like be shameless. I called them so many times to check my status on the wait list when they don't even tell you the number. Like, you know, just do what you, you do to like, to help your chance as much as possible. So. Great, great advice. Great advice. Yeah, that, that's my advice. That was my personal story. <laughs> right. <laughs> but no, no, it's, it's definitely extremely helpful. And like, once again, thank you, um, Rewin. I think that, you know, some people actually might want to reach out to you and ask you more questions. Is there any way that, um, do you have any type of uh, contact information that you can provide to the viewers just in case they want to ask you another question about Creighton or anything else? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you can find me on Instagram. Um, uh, that's a very uh, easy way to get a hold of me. Um, or I mean, I could drop my email. Um, most my emails are forwarded like to both the school and my like personal account. So I'll definitely see it if anyone um, shoots me an email. Um, but like, please make the subject something like. Uh, Read me. I am a student. Like, <laughs> real student um, creating like questions or something like that, you know, um, just make the subject something like where I'm like, oh, I probably should read this. <laughs> you know, I probably should open this. Um, but yeah, if they want to get a hold of me, uh, they could slide into my DMs pretty much on any form of social media. Okay. And I, I'll probably see it. <laughs> my name is pretty weird. So you'll probably find me if you type it in. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. Okay. And like, what is the actual like uh, Instagram name? Oh, so it's just my, literally my first and last name, one word. So R-E-W-A-N-V-I-N-E-L-D-I-N-E. -N -E -L -L -E. All right. All right. Great. Great, great. Well, thank you so much. Um, on behalf of Future DS, on behalf of all of our viewers, we, we know you're extremely busy. So we are super, super grateful that you did this interview and you shared your perspective with us today. Yeah, the pleasure is all mine. I'm glad I could help. Feel free to contact me if anyone watching this ever has any questions about Creighton. I'm definitely down to help out.
Great. Thank you so much. Everybody, um, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit the like button as well as that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know whenever we post new content. But until next time, see y'all later.